Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jen and today I want to share with you everything I know about the popular garden flower nasturtium. First we're going to talk through all the reasons you might want to plant nasturtium. Then I'll share with you how to start the seeds, how to nurture it while it's growing, and then what to do once you get flowers, leaves, and seeds. You don't want to miss the end. At the very end of the video I'm going to eat the flower and eat the leaf for the very first time. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get into it. Nasturtium is one of those plants you can plant for a variety of reasons. A lot of people prefer only the ornamental value of nasturtium. It's such a beautiful flower that people will often put them on a trellis or a pergola or even just in a mulch bed in the front of their house because of the vining quality that it has. It grows very quickly and it vines all over the ground or all over the raised bed wherever it is and it'll grow very rapidly and cover a lot of space rapidly. Another reason people like to grow nasturtium is to attract pollinators. People will grow nasturtium right next to a flowering vegetable like a squash or a pumpkin to help bring in the pollinators. While we're on the subject of companion planting, nasturtiums are also great at attracting aphids. So if you have a plant such as a pepper or a strawberry that's prone to attracting aphids, put some nasturtium next to it and see if it helps. Um, a word of caution about using it as a trap crop, it will not help with caterpillars and worms. I've, I can show you a spot in my garden right now where I put it next to kale and radishes and the leaves are just totally eaten up by caterpillars and the nasturtium is doing nothing about it. So don't expect it to fix all pests, but it will fix aphids. Right here is a spot in the garden where I have nasturtium planted right next to daikon radishes. Look at the leaves on the daikon radishes. This is clearly worm or caterpillar destruction, and the nasturtiums did nothing for it. Every part of the nasturtium plant is also edible, so some people choose to grow it specifically for the edible properties. Now that we know why you might want to grow nasturtium, let's get into how to grow nasturtium. The first time I ever planted nasturtium, I just took the seeds straight out of this packet, dry as a bone, and stuck them in the ground. I just dropped them all over the ground, so we'll see if some nasturtiums grow. <laughs> I waited weeks and weeks, and I got no germination at all. So the next time I did it, I decided to do a little more research, and because of this tough outer shell, they do much better if you soak them overnight. So the way I do it is just throw it in a small mason jar full of water with a lid on it and soak it overnight. When I was ready to plant them after the overnight soak, I still put three, per, three seeds per hole when I was sowing the seeds. I really was just doing that because I was doubtful of the germination rate, but let me show you why you don't need to do that. There's a spot in the garden right now where I just did that, and they're, um, they've been going for a couple weeks, and you can actually see three different nasturtium plants because I put three seeds in there. So really all you need is one. Right back here is an example of where I planted three nasturtium seeds in one hole. And you can see one, two, three separate nasturtium plants. I really didn't need to do that. Nasturtium is a pretty easy plant. It likes warm weather, cool weather, just not freezing temperatures, and it won't do well in burning hot Florida sun in the hot summer. I'm in central Florida, so I would avoid planting it in a full sun spot in the summer, but it would do well in a shady spot in the summer. If you're in other parts of the country where it's not quite so hot, go ahead and try nasturtium over the summer and see if it works for you. It's a very low maintenance plant. It's happy in any kind of soil with very little watering demand. I will show you an example in my garden where I have nasturtium flourishing in areas where I have irrigation set up and also nasturtium doing well in a potted container where I don't have irrigation set up at all. It's a very low maintenance plant, so it's perfect for beginners. Here are two different spots in my garden where I have nasturtium planted in two different ways. Up here, this is in my raised bed and it's set up on a timer with irrigation and it's doing well. Down here, this is in a container with rosemary and there's no individual watering set up here at all and it's doing well. When it comes to the location in your garden, I want you to keep in mind its vining qualities. 
it grows very fast and it grows vines. So it could very easily take over some space in your garden bed that you're not intending it to take over. Let me show you what I mean. Right here's an example of where I have it on the edge of my raised bed and you can see it's starting to come out and vine. It's basically taking over the spot where I have parsley growing. So be cautious about that and don't smother out your other crops. Let's talk about some of the ways that people eat nasturtium. See these green seed pods right here? So easy to just pluck off and actually you can pickle it and it becomes a caper substitute. Another way to use the leaves is to dry them out, roast them and then grind them and they become a black pepper substitute. Of course, you can also just let the seeds fall and you'll get self-sowing nasturtiums over and over year after year. Now, when people eat the flowers, they pick the freshest flowers. They don't pick the ones like this that kind of look like they're dying or they're on their way out and they already have like the development of a seed pod going on the inside. They'll take these fresh ones. Well, that's a bad example. Um, here, this one looks great, a fresh one. They'll take that off and eat it. I'm gonna check it for bugs first though. I, oh man, there's definitely an after, there's a pepper kick at the very end. It is really good. Um, and it would make a great addition to a salad similar to arugula. Don't know how many of these flowers I'm gonna keep eating, but that was neat. When people eat the flowers, they normally would put it on a salad or something like that. Um, probably not the best for cake decorating flowers because of that peppery taste. Something like a borage flower would be much better in that application. The leaves are also edible. You can pluck off a fresh one that's really green, just like that. No leaf miners or anything. You don't want to eat any bugs. Um, but some people, if they're really big leaves, they'll use it as um, like a wrap for like a lettuce wrap or something like that, or they'll put it in salad. Um, and sometimes they even dry it and make tea. And the tea is supposed to help so much with a cold and a cough. Although to me, a peppery tea doesn't sound good at all. If you have a recipe for it, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna eat this. So the flowers and the leaves just taste like arugula. It is a little bit of a new, um, <laughs> new delicacy for me, so I don't know how often I'm gonna eat it, but I like what it brings to the garden regardless. Hope you like this video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.